brought to you by Simply Sam and Katie. Um, we're going to do our very best. Welcome to the talk, Mind the Chap, the Net Politics of the AFD in the German uh, Parliament. Miriam Seifert is giving this talk. She's the best person to do this because since 2016, she's been working in the Bundestag as part of the Green Party about net politics subjects. And that's she could feel how all the different parties, especially the AFD, um, are uh, putting their thoughts forward. Warm welcome to Miriam. Yeah, well, very welcome also from me from this talk to this talk uh, on the net politics of the AFD in the German Parliament. I am speaking as a private person here today. I'm not representing any party. I am not a member of any party. The AFD um, obviously do true to their uh, right wing nature once entering the parliament um, has mainly pushed towards subjects such as migration, inner uh, security, um, Muslims, uh, Islam. And um, in public, obviously, uh, the discourse is mainly about the uh, racist uh, contributions they were making. And um, it was mainly covered uh, what they were doing in this regard. To give you two examples, the um, AFD uh, parliamentarian Kuyo in September uh, went really deep into the right-wing lingo. Um, and the second example, Birgit Malzak winkelmann also in September in one of her presentations as part of the health, uh, public health discourse, she was fantasizing about uh, all the different diseases that refugees are bringing into our country and that that's why every migrant should per se be put into quarantine once they enter. Those are obviously talks that you do not want to listen to. You makes you feel quite nauseous, to be honest. And I realized that in all this noise, this racist, anti-Islamic noise, there was very little that was covered about their net politics. So whenever I talked to people, a lot of times their reaction was, um, the AFD is doing something in net politics because nobody really looks out for that and they don't really watch out and they don't see that they're active and they don't know what parliamentarian is is uh, putting efforts in, in this regard. So, uh, quick question, who of you, uh, please raise your hands, could name one member of the parliament of the party of the IFD who is putting, focusing their work on net politics or has been aware of what the IFD is putting forward when it comes to net politics. No hands are raising as far as I can see from my booth. She can see three hands from her stage. Uh, so there's three people raising their hands. And I think that's very, very telling. So who, if not you, would have realized that this discussion is going on? And I find that quite telling and, and threatening. And, and it's a good example of I know, I mean, this is just an anecdotal evidence of, of this room and obviously the, the party itself is, is not connected to net politics. And this is obviously not, su it's not surprising uh, because covering net politics in the parliament, they usually just cover what the big coalition and, the, and, and how they're in uh, discussion with the democratic opposition. And that usually is like this, the, the CDU and the SPD are doing, uh, are suggesting something silly like the state Trojan horse and then the opposition uh, files against this. And, and what the AFD is saying about these things, nobody really knows and covers. They're, they're even in the, in the, in the groups within, the, the, the AFD's standpoint is quite irrelevant in the debate, but they're still there and they are participating in these debates and they're talking in uh, the different groups and they, they show up at net politics discussions outside of parliament and maybe even within realms that you're active. And that's why we have to deal with this. And this is why I want, what I want to cover today. This kind of um, perspective, that, like this kind of view that's kind of out of view, this dead point, we want to shed some light on that. And to, um, Start, I would like to ask Alexander Gauland, the head of the AfD. Um, it's, it's commonly known that me personally, I don't have a tight connection towards the internet. I'm not a professional of, this, of these questions. I can just see the problem, and we all see the problem that uh, 
places of employment are being taken away by digitalization. And um, we haven't really thought about this, but strategically about digitalization, I can't really say anything and I wouldn't say that we have this. And I mean, now we could say that everything was said, but we still have a bit of time, so we can dive deeper into this subject. So first of all, fundamentally, the AfD currently has 91 members in Parliament. Uh, that's because some people exited the party after the election, such as Frauke Petri, and and the, you can show these uh, f see these four people who are party less. Uh, these are former members of the AfD, and you can see that they are the largest um, party of, in opposition right now. They have more members than the left party. In the plenum, in the parliament, they sit all the way to the right next to the AfD. You can see the pizza slice all the way to the right. That's the uh, AfD party's section in the parliament. And as the biggest party of uh, in within the opposition, they have the right to talk fast because they are the largest um, party in opposition. And in relation to the others, they get more time to talk. That is p within the plenum and within all the other uh, groups of discussion. So they can talk about any uh, subject matter. They can file anything. They can suggest new laws. They can uh, file smaller or larger things in talks where professionals are being invited, they can suggest professionals and they can also suggest subjects that professionals are being invited to parliament on. Most net political discussions are usually happening next to the plenum as part of the group Digital Agenda and there's obviously other, uh, there's like the inner, uh, the inner security so there's like it's it's about like um, basically more better digital infrastructure. There's all sorts of um, groups that deal with digitalization. So there's the Commission of Artificial Intelligence, and then there's the um, the Commission for um, Professional Education in the Digital World, and these commissions are only there th during one legislative period, and they usually deal with one specific topic or question. And beyond that, the uh, fractions and the AFD can uh, send out uh, representatives who are not necessarily parliamentarians, to give you two examples. Um, they can be part of the, um, of the, of the board for the um, net politics and things like that. And in those, uh, they can also send out representatives. And we're mainly interested in three parliamentarians of the AFD. Those are the three that are part of the Commission for Digital Ar Agenda and uh, Artificial Intelligence, and it's the three of these. That's Uwe Kamann, Uwe Schulz, and Joanna Kota. Um, I've had a few uh, quite tasteless jokes uh, about uh, this trio of two men and one woman, uh, but I'm gonna refrain from uh, going deeper into this. 10 days ago, this news popped up. Uwe Kamann left the party surprisingly we don't really know much why he left i've got my suspicions but i'll maybe get into that a bit later uh, it's quite interesting i'm gonna uh, try to inform myself on his website maybe he talks about writes about why he left the party but then i realized uh, there wasn't much and uh, they basically turned off his website straight away that usually means that the party and the parliamentarian itself, uh, himself didn't separate in a very good manner and fashion. But because he's still part of the commissions, he, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover um, his participations and I'm going to leave out the fact that he's left the party, but I will cover what he put forward in, within the commissions. So if you look at these three and, and you observe them, and I mean, I can see them while I work, I, I sit in these commissions and and, and I sit in the plenum, I can see and you can realize that they have a quite normal um, manner of communication. They're not as loud and rowdy and, and normally when you see on the internet, you, you on Twitter and YouTube, you see quite aggressive, violent behavior. Um, it's usually quite extreme and 
you might remember Gauland when he said we will hunt the members of other parties. In relation to these, these three are quite quiet and they're quite normal and, and conform, like composed and they don't use violent language as much as other members of the party. And in compared to other members, they don't really belong to the hardline right neo-Nazi. So the FDA has a, there's a page um, where you can see the relationships within the party, who is the furthest right and who is uh, not so far right. And I, I looked up the three members that we're looking at and to show you the contrast, I will show you the analysis of the TATS um, that covers the people. Okay, so Peter Felser is a former member of the German army and uh, is in a diverse super right publications um, in the beginning of the 90s, he was a mem member of a uh, quite right-wing party that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Felser's hobbies are uh, to deny that the Holocaust existed and anti-Semitism. And um, in relation to that, the relationships for the people that we're looking at are quite harmless. Kaman, for example, there was some of his employers, uh, his, his staff have relations to the economic circles. Um, same goes for Uwe Schulz and Johanna Kota was used to be a part of the CDU um, and she has relationships to uh, like within compared to other members of the party they're quite um, conservative but from the surface viewed from the surface they're not super right wing and racist and you can obviously tell you can tell from the way that they do politics and the way that they act within parliament. Um, the center of... Um, so there's a, th Basically, there's a center that looks at, uh, on social, um, sociological center that focuses on how people act within parliament and they look specifically at the AFD members. Um, so there's um, a difference between what happens within parliament than in comparison to uh, local governments. So I'm going to read this quote. I'm going to try to translate this. So um, movement oriented are living in situative moments in which they are trying to separate from the parliament and they will and they uh, understand themselves as a voice for the uh, right. Um, and they're trying to mobilize people uh, within the street. So this is a categorization for people of the of the party that are really trying to rile up people on the roads. They want to motivate people to walk out on the streets and, and get aggressive and they, and they, they just kind of want to get this kind of feedback of like finally someone is saying something. So these are um, members of the parliament that as themselves deny the parliament. And um, then there's another uh, member of these um, of the party that are called the parliament oriented and they um, try to um, be less and they want to they want to be known for professional um, participation in the plenum and they want to work argumentatively and um, they are trying to strategically um, position the AFD as a a party that's a bit further right to the union, the uh, Christian Democratic Union, and uh, they want to um, aim to establish the party itself as a professional party within parliament. So they are different to the parliamentarians who are trying to basically uh, cause disruption within parliament. So they don't, from their standpoint, uh, do not, like they don't want to So they're trying to be a bit more um, calm, a bit more quiet. And in this study from this institute, VZB, um, they, they are looking at these two, two positions and these two criteria um, for the federal parliament. Uh, and I think it can be very well applied to the people in the national parliament too. And so I would say there are two wings in the national um, government in the 
AfD, um, which are basically the same. So the net politicians are mostly uh, orientated in this people looking for coalition and to cooperate. So the net politicians um, don't really stick out in the commission. They are doing their work according to parliamentary work. They are chatting in breaks with other parliamentarians. They say happy birthday in a very nice way to them. Um, they agree with people f from other opposition parties or also cooperate on their amendments and vote with them. So, yeah, let's look at what they are actually talking content-wise. So, w when I started looking at what they are, what topics they are covering, I found out three categories they are um, talking about. So, one of them is anti-European and nationalist. The second option is to be the myth of being a victim or ins like talking they are being a victim. And the third thing is they just agree with everyone else and don't bring up any of their own points but just agree to the others. An example for the first um, category, the anti-European or nationalist, is they disagree with anything coming from the EU level and um, this is very much according to the origin of the party. So they are against any EU legislation uh, and if it was, would be according to them um, we would be separating um, to this. So. So the data new data protection law uh, was like a big thing recently and um, there are good reasons why this is an issue um, and uh, yeah, another example is there was um, experts being invited. Oh no, the commissioners were talking about uh, the talk in the commi like the topics in the commission, and uh, they were talking about an international um, meeting. And the AfD politician was saying, "International stuff is not really our thing." Um, so that's interesting because the internet is very much a about the internet, uh, internet is very much about international exchange. So they should maybe be against anything which has to do with the internet. And on the other side, um, they are uh, trying to be a victim about everything. So, for example, with um, social bots, they have used them themselves to argue against censorship and um, that freedom of speech is being restricted. So they are using the tools to argue against, um, uh, they say their own positions are being evicted from the internet because there is no real freedom of stage. But like this position can only be argumented if you are saying um, racist positions, sexist positions, hate speech should be covered by freedom of speech. But from my position, that's not the case. Uh, and so the AfD does do a lot of amendments um, to the government. Um, and it is a lot about freedom of speech. And we have two examples about this. So they did two amendments about um, Reconquista Internet, which was a thing initiated by Böhmermann, who is a German comedian. Um, and they one asked another thing about the welcoming app, which helps refugees to um, be welcome in Germany. And there was another one about indie media and uh, another one about um, Demokratie Leben, which is a program about dem democracy. And um, the, the, the program that the AfD is 
right extremist, so they had a lot of questions about this. And there is a lot of um, discussions where the AfD manages uh, to turn the topic around to their favorite topic. So there was one um, discussion which was about digitalization, but uh, he somehow managed to continue talking about the refugee crisis. So um, very often in the majority of cases, they don't have their own position regarding net politics, but they just agree to everything uh, the other says. As a as a pa parliamentarians are saying, so it was about the hacking of the government and um, the other opposition parties were uh, were saying this is not like worked on completely, and the AfD just agrees and says, yeah, we are all in agreement about this. And here we have an example about this. This is a speech by Uwe Kaman um, about the head commiss commission about artificial intelligence. So the artificial intelligence shouldn't be about party um, parties, but it's ab about... Uh, and I think we should just follow along this because this is about economic development and we should follow this. And my party will... Um, work on this with our expertise. I don't want to look into the past too much because I don't have the time, um, because then we would be here until tomorrow. The question is how constructive and um, how we should look for the future of our country, and that's the important thing to agree on. So to summarize, Regarding net politics, the AfD doesn't really have their own positions or their own propositions. They disagree with European policies and they just um, leave the topic if they are, don't have something new to say and just come back to their core topics of migration. And in many cases, they just agree with the other parties and... Um, are trying, and this is where I see a big um, problem because when the AfD is always agreeing with you, uh, it's easy to forget that um, actually the AfD is very right wing and is having a lot of racist positions they are voicing quite clearly. But during this net debate on net politics, they seem nice, they act normally, but like in reality they aren't. They are part of the AfD, which is um, very racist. So the AfD is not the only ones around. And here we have um, an amendment about the digital... Um, thing of the government so like hip startup people can visit the government and there's a question number two from this um, why are only experts from the economy uh, being invited and not for example from the Chaos Communication Congress or from the digital Digitalization of the digital community. So they align with our position. So I hope you're not too happy that they are in agreement with us. So it's a trap. So there was uh, one thing about the, um, where they were asking about Republica and the financing of this conference. And they were asking the parliament to cut the finances uh, for the Republica. And it was about the army and um, the Republica didn't want to invite the army to have um, to be at the conference. And the AfD was like, this can't go on. So we should cut finances. So 
this is kind of interesting because uh, the DigiGas and the Republica have a lot of people in common. They are a personal unity. And on the one side, the AfD is asking about inviting the DigiGas, but then for Republica, they are in opposition to them. So in preparation for this talk, I've talked to a lot of people um, and how they are dealing with the AfD. And um, for I, I would say the how the AfD is behaving, um, there are three categories again. Uh, one way to deal with the AfD is to just deal with the AfD like with any other party. There is like a breakfast thing where people are uh, politicians working on net politics are invited, and they are just inviting. Uh, politicians from all parties and they are also inviting the people from the AfD. The second way to deal with the AfD is to um, dis uh, to use demarcation and um, don't communicate this to the outside world. And um, they are not talking to the AfD, they often say we are only talking to democratic parties, uh, but you only find this out when you are talking to them directly. You can't see this just from their public work. And the third way to deal with the AfD is to clearly state that you are in disagreement with the AfD. One statement um, I really liked was about quantum computing in the Commission for Digital um, agenda and they can invite experts to these commissions and they get then the experts get invited and can talk to the puzzle petition about the topic and the AfD invited someone and didn't didn't the AfD didn't tell the people the experts they were inviting so the government was inviting the expert but wasn't at first wasn't aware that he was invited by the AfD um, but when he found out he didn't like to come and then the other pol parties were saying well we would also like you to come so uh, he in fact came to the hearing and he in his opening statement he made it very clear that he uh, was anti-racist and so on and that he was um, sad about the situation he was invited in but um, he still wanted to talk about quantum computing so that was a nice example. Another example is netpolitik.org uh, which is a German uh, net political uh, website and organization um, so they also have a position which um, where they clearly state that they are asking all parties which have been in the government but um, not racist organizations and um, also the CCC is um, published a statement and in 2005 the co club um, published a position that they are disagreeing with any right positions, right-wing positions, and that was back in 2005. And this, and another example um, how we can handle this is from the Open Knowledge Foundation in Berlin, and they are in a um, complex where there is a lot of other companies, and uh, they noticed that in one other of these organizations there was a Nazi working there and they did some research and uh, this person is involved with Combat 18 and um, was in demonstrations by the AfD and then they were thinking what could we do and they did some action so they talked to the people within the organizations and checked if they were in agreement and we like talked about what they could do and there were a couple of different suggestions on what to do uh, but they were all in agreement that something needs to be done and then they also communicated with the other organizations in the same uh, building and talked to the Mobile Beratung gegen Rechts, an organization working against uh, right organizations um, in Berlin 
and they were like, we can't evict them from the house ourselves, but we can place stickers at uh, their doors um, to make clear that right-wing positions aren't welcome in this building and make clear um, that they won't be in agreement with these types of positions and also makes this a subtle statement to this Nazi working in the same building. So um, take example on this and talk about the issue with other people and you don't have to invite anything new. You can look at other organizations who have policies about this. When you're invited and the AfD is also invited, one position can be that you won't be attending this meeting. You can use this uh, paper by the Chaos Communication Club. Uh, you can also refer back to the Berliner Konsens, which was an agreement between the parliamentary parties in Berlin from the parties in that time um, at, in the Berlin Parliament and all the democratic parties agreed to um, not make refugees talking points for their um, campaigns. And here again, the MBR, Mobile Beratung gegen Rechtsextremismus in Berlin, is an organization which um, is a place you like an organization you can talk to if you want some help how to handle right wing positions in the AfD. So we're coming back to the to Uwe Kamen and let's we aren't sure why he uh, left the party the AfD. In this uh, press statement, he said um, there was there were disagreements with, in the party um, about policies and there aren't really a lot of other experts within the party uh, about net politics so that's a bit confusing and in this tweet um, we we can see that um, they kind of liked working with him and he was very engaged in the work he was doing and um, maybe this can be about the other politicians in the AfD not being in agreement with this um, strategy to cooperate with other uh, with other parties, to cooperate with the other parties in opposition, the Greens, the left party, and um, they are a lot more looking to um, be in disagreement and fight against these parties. So if you're interested in this, um, I, I would argue that you can just look at their speeches in the parliament online. You don't need to invite them to, their, to your own events. And I would like to ask you uh, within your organizations to find clear positions against the AfD and don't fall for the trap of this neutral positions and agreement the AfD is forcing within the parliament. And uh, because I feel that this style of working um, in cooperation um, is on the decline because like him leaving the party um, is an example of the, these p politicians looking for cooperation might be leaving the party right now. So the AfD within the national government will continue to be um, uh, revising history and uh, stating clearly racist positions. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Miriam. All right, you know the game. There's five microphones. If you're leaving, please don't, just stay. But if you absolutely have to, please use that exit over there. So five microphones, please position yourself at the microphones or uh, go online and short questions, please, because we are short on time. Hi, thank you so much for this great talk. What I would be interested in is the AfD would is usually portrayed as a law and order party and that's kind of in conflict to the fact that 
they are themselves on a bunch of watch lists. So how does the IFD position themselves? Well, there's a lot of discrepancies uh, within, like there's a lot of, even when you look at freedom of speech, like all these little inquiries they usually file that I gave examples on, they usually file for something like, somebody mentioned that the IFD is a right extremist party, and then they usually uh, claim defamation and being victims. Um, but when it's about their positions, uh, the borders of freedom of speech uh, are a completely different thing. There's usually a cognitive dissonance between these two things, and you can see these in, in all ways, shapes, or forms. And you can't logically understand their standpoint on this. Num microphone number four, please. I had a question. I have a question uh, on the subject of freedom of speech. For your own freedom of speech, we are all fighting for. But for the freedom of speech of others, there's a lot less people fighting. So if the IFD is claiming they're fighting for freedom of speech of others, and they're raising, like, the question is, are they trying to stand in for others' right to freedom of speech or just their own? Um, in the past year, I did not realize once where the IFD uh, would have uh, tried to stand in for others' rights to uh, freedom of speech. I will let you know if I do see that happening. Other questions, we still got time. Does the internet have a question? I don't think so. Ah, oh, microphone number two. I would be interested in what the IFD has, their position on uh, security policies and safety and they're being watched but like I would be interested in that particular realm um, I'm sorry I think I'm the wrong expert like I am wasting my time away in the uh, Commission for Digital Agenda and that's not part of that I'm sure that you could have a great talk on this subject um, how the cognitive dissonance uh, looks uh, in that regard but I can't really give you examples and pull anything out of the hat because I am not in that commission, I'm sorry. Uh, microphone number five, please. Hi, um, I have a question. How is the IFD positioning itself uh, when it comes to um, the um, new EU copyright? Um, that's a good question. I'm trying to go over all the different positions to all the EU topics. They usually mesh up a bit. I don't want to lie. I don't want to tell lies up here so I'm gonna refrain from saying something here and I'm sure that Miriam Reda would be somebody good to talk to about this. Julia Reda is uh, a parliamentarian in the European Parliament who is specializing in uh, copyright issues and I realize that the AfD when this is a topic um, is in disagreement with EU policies or they are just absent and they are holding big speeches. Oh, it's in, about the EU Parliament. So, um, in every case where they could have a different proposition of how to approach this, they were just absent and d didn't um, talk about it. But like copyright law is not my field of expertise. Okay, we still have room for one more question. Thank you so much for this talk. I would be in agreement with you in the sense that you are calling for people to position themselves against the IFD. I, I, I think that's really important, not just as a singular person, but also as an organization. My question is, how can we take these facts that you're talking about, like specific reactions by the IFD, how can we collect them and use them argumentatively against the all-present argument that the IFD is a democratic party, which I think it only is in a limited way, but how can we collect them and share them to form a positioning as a group? I mean, everybody's free in, um, in how and which way they want to do this and what platform they want to use and how, they wanna, how you want to collect it. Uh, there's a bunch of material that's there uh, where you can inform yourself and where you can, uh, all the talks that I've shown you, they're in the mediatic of the German parliament. 
all the parliamentary discussions are videotaped and you can look at them, you can download them, you can see all the inquiries they file for. Um, it's a bunch of data, it's a whole big pile of data that you can deal with and that you can sift through. Um, I was happy to be able to focus on one specific aspect for this talk, but like taking this whole long list and scrolling through it, through all the small inquiries and uh, weapons from the 3D printer, a lot of stuff on health, public health, a lot of stuff on inner security. Um, and this part, they, they file a lot of small inquiries and you can, you can sift through that by yourself. The material is there. It's publicly available. All right, that was it. Thank you, Miriam. Um, and thank you guys also for...